Hello, uh, my name is Kate Gorringe Smith, and um, I'm the coordinator of the Overwintering Project, which is on at the moment at the Mornington Peninsula Regional Gallery. And um, I'm here to introduce you to the fun art of eco printing. Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to mention uh, India Flint, who's the author of this and other beautiful books, who really is the mother of uh, eco printing and eco dyeing in Australia. Uh, I think she mainly works with uh, fabric, but she certainly works with paper as well, and she gets the most beautiful results. And in this book, which is called Second Skin, she gives a lot of the tips which I've used uh, as I've been investigating my own eco printing processes. So if you want to find out more about it after watching the video, you can look up India Flint. Uh, she's also on YouTube and she does run courses, but there's lots and lots of um, information online and on YouTube and on Instagram about eco printing if you want to delve further into it. Uh, I'll just show you a couple of prints that I've created earlier um, with a mixture of leaves and also seaweed and um, it shows you a little bit of the range of, of colour that you can get that's quite deep um, and so these dots are from seaweed and I think this is from seaweed um, and this print has bracken. Bracken doesn't give colour but it's a beautiful resist and these orangey colours are given by uh, onion skins uh, which always give colour. The dye of onion skin will always come out in an eco print. Um, I've used onion skins as well in this one. You can see these areas of colour here. Um, you know, you may or may not decide that you like the onion skins, but it's a good, reliable uh, source of colour. Um, now, just another uh, quick word before I start about the plant materials. So today I've just got gathered materials from my own garden and the onion skins. Uh, but if you're out in the, in the wild, uh, don't pick uh, leaves and flowers and things off wild plants and in gardens and things that aren't yours. Um, use the windfalls. It's good after a rainstorm to walk around because often you'll see that bits have fallen off onto the ground. Uh, and on the beach I do take seaweed but not in great quantities. Um, so yeah, so just be mindful and um, be careful of bugs and creatures and things like that that might be living on the bits of vegetation that you take. So I'm going to do three experiments today. Um, I'm going to do a little concertina book and I'm going to do a bundle around a can to see what effect that has and I'm going to do another bundle just round, um, wound around a stick um, just to give you three different alternative ways to do an eco print. So this is my uh, little concertina book. So the paper I'm using, uh, I use a paper, a printmaking paper called Fabriano Tiepolo. It's a very sturdy paper, but the most important thing about it is that it's 100% cotton. Uh, India Flint in her book talks about um, that the best papers to take up the dye uh, or the best fabrics are pure fabrics like wool and cotton and silk. Um, well, there are, I don't think there are papers made from, from wool or silk, but there is paper made from cotton. And the other thing about using printmaking papers is because you, what you actually end up doing is boiling the paper, uh, is they're very highly sized, which means they will tolerate being boiled. The paper won't just disintegrate, which of course is important. Um, Fabriano Tiepolo is quite an expensive paper. I like it because apart from being 100% cotton, it's very solid. It also has a very nice um, untextured finish, which I like because often I will do lino cutting prints uh, over the top of the eco prints and I like having a, a, a flat surface. Um, but there are cheaper cotton rag papers and also I do know that people use watercolor paper uh, for, and get very good results. So you can experiment and find out what works best for you. So I've gathered 
uh, numerous plants from my garden today. I usually find that gum leaves uh, give a good result and uh, the, the sort of greyer the leaf, the better it is apparently. Um, I've got some corias that are in bloom so we won't get any pink from the, the flowers itself. Um, I haven't had very much luck with colour from flowers. Um, I'm sure it's not impossible but it's just not been a priority for me. Um, but they often leave a really pretty impression. Uh, I've got wisteria leaves and um, it's not in flower at the moment but I've also got some lovely colour from wisteria having just said I just having said I haven't got anything from flowers, wisteria flowers I have, um, but not a purple, more of a green. Um, I've got some acacia leaves and I'm not quite sure what this is, it could be an acacia or it might be a, um, a she-oak of some kind. So that's what I'm starting with. So I've got my little concertina book, so what I'm going to do um, is put the vegetable material on. Um, I find, I'll just put a little spider there, I find that um, I don't like to think too hard about the way I place the plant matter uh, because I quite like the idea of just having a random result and I don't like, um, you know, having a plan and getting it set in your head and going to a great deal of time and effort only to be disappointed because it doesn't turn out the way you think it's going to be. Um, I'm a bit the same with timing um, and paper types, although I have experimented a little bit with paper types uh, to get sort of, I find that Fabriano also like has really rich colour results, uh, which is nice. Um, but you know, in terms of what metals I put in, what plants I use, um, I don't mind a bit of bit of random and unexpected um, things happening. It makes me feel a bit witchy. Always a good feeling. And it's really nice actually just to walk around the garden and pick things and look at your garden and it's just a pleasant activity to do anyway, just to be out there. So I'm going to bundle this up this way and then because I've got the little V's on the backs as well, I'm going to pop some more leaves and things in there. Just to see what happens. There you go. There's another. Oops. Another one in there. It's a bit big. Oh, and some onion skins just for that colour. You get quite addicted, I find. Um, you know, I find myself walking along the street thinking, mm, I wonder what that would do. I wonder what that would do. And basically, um, you need reasonably sturdy. Uh, things because it's going to be boiled so you don't want it, things to turn to mush uh, and depending on how which way you're binding it um, you can include sort of twigs and and things um, 
It's just if you're if you're rolling it, as you'll see me doing later, you'll need to think about the orientation of those harder parts of the plant and which way they're facing, um, because you don't want to you don't want to make holes in the paper. Um, Okie dokie dokie. There we are. Right. So what I'm going to do with this one is I've got um, I'm going to. So what you want, you want the paper in as close contact as possible with the plant material. I've got two bits, these are old um, lino cutting bits of vinyl and you could use, you know, you could use anything that's not going to fall apart in when it's boiled. So you could use not, so not cardboard, but maybe bits of, of wood or um, like plastic from, for instance, um, ice cream container lids or something like that and what what I do is I just squish it like this and then I use these big big bulldog clips to really fasten it down into a nice neat bundle go that's bundle number one um so i'm going to wrap these around the the can which will have another effect because on the outside it'll take some impression from actually being on the can uh, so i'm just going to dampen the paper and the only reason i'm doing this really is uh it helps the vegetable material to stick to the paper and then much the same, well, exactly the same process really as before. Um, leaves, variety of leaves positioned on the paper. A little bit of onion skin, which guarantees a little bit of color. And you may find that you don't like the effect of the onion skin um, and don't need it. I, I use it sometimes, other times I don't. Uh, a bit more. Aria. The flowers, it's such lovely flowers. We're not going to get pink from the flowers, um, but it might leave a nice impression. Some of these little leaves. Again. Um, this could be nice. We could get a little impression from the... Um, the little gum nuts there maybe if we can squish that in some of these I'm going to roll it this way so I'm putting everything that's not um, that's a little bit more tough um, across the paper because then when I roll I'm not going to be there's not no chance that they'll break and pierce the actual paper itself and some of these little furry dudes for texture um, now it's it's double-sided of course so by the time you've built up your layers you don't really know what's facing the other side of the of the paper so it's always a surprise okay so now I'm going to put sheet number two on the top cut a good length of string and you can reuse the string of course, after it's been dyed. Just put that somewhere handy. And then I get my tin and actually just for fun, let's pop some of these between the tin and the paper. Okay. Okay. another bundle so I've got my string which I want to tie then as tightly as possible Ooh. so it's pressing the 
paper to the plant material and to itself and to the to that tin as well. Okay, and then I'll tie that as tightly as I can. Now you do need metal in your water um, of some kind because um, that acts as the mordant which just means that um, because it is a chemical process and you I, I believe I'm not a chemist but I believe what happens is that the um, the the chemistry between the the metal in the water and the paper uh, helps bind the um, the dyes that the plants release to the paper or the cotton rag um, and you can see that I am going to have I've got um, so I guess that's an aluminium can and I've also got I guess these are probably um, steel so I've already got aluminium and steel in there uh, if I was using one of my printing plates uh, as for instance to keep this um, bound then I'd have copper in there and they do have different effects like I've heard that copper makes the colors go greener and I know that um, steel makes the colors go blacker um, so you can read up on that and find out also you know which way you like to go so th these will be in there together the third bundle I'm going to do I'm actually just going to bundle on a stick um, so again I've got two two sheets of of paper ready to go. I'm just going to make them wet to make the vegetable matter um, just stay in place a bit better. Same, same process again with the plant material. So I've got all my plants and flowers and leaves and onion skins on there. So I'm going to just put this bit over the top. Okay, squish it all down. I've got my string which my cats have been playing with and I'm going to cut off another nice amount. And then put it out of the way and then I'm going to try and roll this as tightly as I can and oops, it may buckle a little bit. Again, the, the printmaking paper that's 100% cotton rag is pretty pretty durable. It can take quite a lot of, you know, texture and pressure, which is cool. Okie dokie, there we go. Um, it always slips a bit, so there's always a little bit, see, over the left over the edge, and then I'm holding it. I've got my string. And again, the trick is to wind Just hold it a bit. Oops. The trick is to wind it then as tightly as you can because it's the contact that you want between the paper and your vegetable matter that sort of gets the the transfer of the dye and sometimes it's not the colour, um, it's just, I mean, some of that vegetation will not give colour but will act as a resist against the other uh, materials. Um, and sometimes uh, it's more that it gives a, it'll emboss. Um, so there, so we've got three bundles. The one that's got the two sheets of paper flat together so you'll get a mirror image to a certain degree on the two sides of the paper there uh, we're experimenting with the tin can we're going to see what results it has being wound around that and we've got the little concertina book so so now i'm going to get the um the pot ready to put them in 
and cook them. So uh, this is the pot that I'm going to cook everything in. It's enamel. It's really important to have a dedicated pot for your eco printing because obviously you don't want to share, you don't know what chemicals or uh, are coming out of it and it's better to do your cooking outside so I bought these a uh, really cheap pot plate from um, Kmart and I'm outside on the deck and I've got my nice um, enamel pot that I bought from an op shop and it's nearly simmering so that's just water in there at the moment so I'm going to add about half a cup or so of vinegar And I'm going to add some onion skins, which will deepen the colour. And apart from, oh, and um, I thought I'd put some uh, gum leaves in for fun. And then I'm going to pop my bundles in. Um, if that's floating like that it'll be paler on top and darker underneath where it's brewed um, so I think I'll leave it like that and then I'm going to put the top on uh, I'll keep monitoring that uh, till it comes to a good I don't think this uh, hot plate is actually uh, strong enough to get it up to a boil that amount of water but simmering is okay. So I'm going to simmer that for a couple of hours. Then I'm going to turn it off. But I'm going to let the paper bundles sit in there overnight. Um, and I'm going to unbundle them tomorrow. So I always leave them in for at least, well, at least overnight, if, if not longer. Because the, um, the longer you leave it in, the more, um, the richer the colour gets. Um, yeah, so that's a way. So now we just wait and see. So, uh, normally I would leave um, the, the bundles in the pot only overnight, but circumstances have meant that I've left them in the pot. So it was a Sunday night. 48 hours. So they will be very dark. This is very exciting. Um, I've got my pot. I've poured all the water out already. Um, as you can see, I've put plenty of butcher's uh, paper on the table because it's fairly messy because the um, you'll see that the um, the dye bath became very dark, which is exciting. It's quite greenish as well, so it's going to be exciting to see what they look like. Uh, I've got scissors to cut the... Um, the string and I've got a plastic tub for all the bits of um, vegetable matter that have uh, that I'll be removing from the eco prints <laughs> okay so I think that this is probably the most fun bit of all um, now whatever colors you see when I do this um, don't forget that once they're dry they will not, they will not be as bright. Um, they, they will fade, but um, it's still always fun to see the first sort of brighter colors. So you remember that um, I cooked these for about, I turned, I, I had them, I was gonna cook them for about two hours, but um, I turned the heat off probably after about an hour and a half because I thought, well, the water will stay hot anyway. So here we are. So the first one I'm doing is the, as you can see, the rolled one, which was just rolled around a stick. So fingers crossed. Ooh. So this is just the outside, because don't forget we've got one over the top of another. So all the vegetable matter is sandwiched between these two sheets of, of paper. So, I'll lift that off. Ah, oh, look at that. How exciting.
side to me. Very pink and purple. Um, sometimes, mostly not with the vegetable matter, but if I'm using seaweed, because I find the seaweed itself doesn't usually give that much um, colour, I'll reuse it. I'll just dry it. I'll just take all that off in one action. There we are. You can see these bright areas like here and here. That's the onion skin. Um, very yellow. That could be... Um, uh, I seem to remember getting quite a lot of yellow from the wisteria leaves. Quite yellow over here. It's going to be interesting to see. These are the little the little gum leaves have left these pinky marks. India Flint manages to get this absolutely beautiful, deep, rich red from um, eucalyptus. I am still aspiring to do that, but that's pretty exciting, I think. Okay, so that's the rolly one. I'll put that over here. Oops. Let's do the tin next. This is the tin. Here comes an assistant. And sorry about the text. Okay. Be careful getting the tin out of the water because, of course, it fills up with water. So be careful not to splash yourself. Um, this is quite dark as well. Okay. Again, we've got the double strip. So I'll just, ooh, see? That's the effect of the actual tin can, the rust coming off on the paper. That's quite cool. And then on the other side, oh, this is very dark. Oh, um, normally actually I would have um, uh, a tub full of full of water just so I could rinse the. Um, gee, that's a lot more purple than this. I think that's probably the effect of the the tin, the metal of the tin. Um, yeah, so I'd normally I'd have a, a little bath, a plastic tub of water, so I could just. Um, wash these. Oh, that's quite lovely. Look at that. Very shadowy. A midnight purple colours. There we are. Lovely. Okay. And then last but not least, we've got our little concertina book. With the alligator clips. So there's lots of variables in eco-printing. I mean, there's the paper you use, there's the vegetable material you choose, there's uh, the things that you add to the water, there's how hot the water is, whether you make it boiling or whether you just simmer it, there's weather. You can see in this one where there's some white left on the paper, that's because that rolled up bit was sticking partly out of the water. Um, and there's, you know, what you wrap it with. Makes for hours and hours of fun and enjoyment. There's some nice purple there. Okay. Take that off. And ooh. of course the edges get the blackest because they're exposed. That's very nice. And a lot of this is resist. You can see the red from the, um, I think that is from the onion skins and also from those little gum, gum leaves. Again, it's, ooh, Quite, quite yellow. These feathery um, 
leaves. I think it might be from a kind of a, a calistamine, a bottle brush. But again, you're not getting much colour from them. It's more of a, of a resist. This has got a fair bit of onion skin. This is what this yellow, yellowy bit is. And this is Coria. Ooh. So these are my little gum leaves again. They've gone quite pink. And they probably will stay quite pink, but we'll lose some of the brightness. That's the wisteria leaves. And that's Coria. So if I had done it for a shorter amount of time in the water, um, left it, that is, sorry, soaking, this, these blacks I don't think would be nearly as black. And if you're a methodical kind of person, you can make meticulous notes uh, about every different stage and refer back to it and then you'll get more and more predictable results but personally I actually quite like uh, that surprise every time. It does mean that if I'm doing a, a big print that needs lots of sheets of paper I kind of have to do it all all once um, under the same circumstances but um, case up. It's more fun that way for me. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this demonstration and that you have a lot of fun with your own eco-printing adventure.